Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I'm so excited to be doing a live video tonight for Parshat Tetzaveh. We did a live video for last week's Torah Story Teruma, and it had been a while since we did a live because I was posting my old recordings, but this is awesome because I don't have an old recording of this one either. So here we are live for Shabbat. Well, it's almost Shabbat here, so I wanted to get this done before the sun goes down. So again, tonight's story is called Parshat Tetzave, Tetzave. And it's a continuation, as it always is, <laughs> of last week's story where we were build, starting to build the tabernacle. And with this week's story, it gets really into the details of the tabernacle, the inner details, the interior details, the 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 clothing, the priestly clothing, the the robes, the garments, the breastplates, the incense, the altars, um, and there's a lot to this parsha, but I want to focus because the sun's going down soon. I want to focus on the main points. The first thing I wrote about here in my notes is. God tells Moses to receive pure olive oil from the children of Israel to feed the everlasting flame of the menorah. So it's like, what is the oil represent? And I invite you to meditate on that and what, you know, what comes up for you? What does the oil represent? What does the menorah represent? Because it really is also all a metaphor. So gathering the oil, the pure olive oil from the children of Israel to feed the menorah is like gathering their purity, their essence, their love, which is the very thing that lights the menorah or the, the vessel, right? And then Aaron is supposed to kindle the lights of the menorah from evening till morning. And I wanted to talk about this because for those of you who haven't been following my explanations. Um, every year on Hanukkah, I explain how there's a difference between the menorah and the Hanukkiah. A lot of people, especially if you're not raised Jewish, never hear the word Hanukkiah. Hanukkiah is the special menorah that has an extra branch on each side because Hanukkah is about the overflowing of the light, the miracle of light as it extended in a miraculous way. But typically every day, there was the use of the menorah in the temple and it was always lit, especially in the beginning with the first temple, the tabernacle. So I wrote this down to share with you because I wanted to invite you to find a menorah if you don't already have one, and not a Hanukkiah, but a menorah, which has three on each side and the one in the middle, not four on each side. And you can see it as the three and the three and the one in the middle, seven like the chakras, seven like the days of the week, the one in the middle, the highest one, is the servant candle, which lights the rest. You can kind of see that as like the Sabbath candle or, you know, feel what feels right for you. Feel into it. But I invite you to pick out a beautiful menorah that resonates with you. Maybe you find one in town. Maybe you find one online. And light it every day or at least when you feel called. Because the menorah is not just for Hanukkah. If you light the menorah every day, the regular menorah, regular menorah, and then at the end of the Gregorian year anyway, in December for Hanukkah, or November as it was this year, you light the Hanukkiah, it really adds something to that ritual. Because you're not just lighting that menorah or Hanukkiah that one time in the year. You're doing it all year, and then it leads up to this overflowing of the light. So I invite you to get a menorah for your home with the three branches on each side and the one in the middle, and light it every day or as often as you feel called. The second thing I wrote about here to share is the priestly garments. Why was it so focused on fashion? Like there were so many laws about the fashion and the clothing. It's like, who cares what we wear, right? Who cares? Um, but there's always a reason. Just like last week, we spoke about how you know, why do we need a temple? Why the building of the tabernacle if God is everywhere? It's the intentional act that sanctifies the experience and creates a unique experience within the larger experience of life. Same thing with the clothing. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what we wear, right? The material circumstances don't matter as much as the response does. So it's not about the clothing or the materials themselves so much as it is about the intentionality behind it, the awareness behind it, the, the conscious choosing 
the conscious choice process that it took to put together that outfit or that robe, that attire. And how we express ourselves says a lot about who we are. Maybe we're always changing. We're changing the way we dress. We're changing the way we look. But especially when you have a specific role that you're playing like these priests did, they wanted to really honor that role in every way possible. And of course, choosing very carefully the way that they dressed was a big part of that process. And what's more is they were given divine instructions as to how to dress. That's how important it was. Because even the clothing was so intentional, every piece, every detail, every detail was built, built upon the divine blueprint. Just like they were given the divine blueprint for the construction of the tabernacle, that pattern is what continued to spiral out into the details of everything they did thereafter. All of the interior, de interior details and instructions that were given in this Torah portion for this week, Tetzaveh. So it's about conscious intention and beyond clothes. It's like, how can we use every single thing in our material reality to infuse awareness, intention, use everything as material to align with our intention, our vision, our purpose. Then all mundane things become sacred, become sanctified when they're given that higher purpose. There's actually tarot cards that describe this and a lot of them involve these kinds of concepts that I'm explaining here. But the main one that comes to mind is the Four of Pentacles and it's a man clinging to these coins. He's got coins under his feet, coin in his hand, coin above his head. And it's about attachment to our material reality. And it's so important to consistently ask ourselves, you know, what am I attached to right now? What should I be more involved in? Not necessarily attached, it depends on the definition, but that, that archetype of the Four of Pentacles asks us to look at what it is we're giving our energy to, what, what it is we're feeding our energy to, and is there something we should be giving less energy to? Is there something we should be giving more energy to? Okay, so that's just a little bit of connection between the Tarot and Torah, as you know I like to do that. So with, before I move on, this week, it's a, and tonight especially, it's a really good time to have conversations about this with your family and your friends people who inspire you, and also just have inner dialogue with yourself, your higher self, about how can I use my material reality and the ways in which I express myself physically to support my purpose and my truth and my authenticity. So you might want to write that one down because that's really good for tonight and for the week ahead. How can I dress myself? How can I express myself how can I fashion my mat whole material reality in order to support my authenticity, my truth? Makes for a great conversation starter for Shabbat. Also in this Parsha, the golden altar is fashioned and for the Ketoret to be burned, the sacred incense, the temple incense. So I wrote that one down to share with you because you may want to, if you don't have an altar, create one. You know, not to put idols on or anything like that or do as you wish, but what I'm talking about, the altar I'm talking about is one for the Holy One, the Most High. So maybe the one that you put your Shabbat candles on. Maybe you don't have one yet. Now's the perfect time to make one. I invite you to do that tonight. And it was a golden altar, so if you wanna put gold there, Gold is very symbolic in all occult literature and ancient scriptures, but particularly in this Parsha and the last, we're hearing a lot about gold, you know, and then we'll hear about the golden calf and all this. Gold is often spoken about, especially in this Parsha, because you hear God saying, cast the gold into the fire of your heart, right? And before I go deeper into that, last week, uh, the instructions for the tabernacle started off with give what you can, your gold, your silver, your copper. It started off with this gold, 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 and it's, it's symbolic. And when you understand alchemy, then you understand the importance of gold. So in this Parsha, God says, cast the gold into the fire of your heart and I will mold it into a sanctuary. 
he talks about how the menorah will be fashioned. He says, just throw the gold into the fire and I'll make it, don't worry. And it's because the gold is representing that light, that truth, that love, that essence that we all carry. And that, when it's, when it's lit up in the flame of the heart, what is proposed here is that the, the menorah is the natural form it takes. And if you look at your body, we kind of look like a menorah, right? With like the middle and then our arms like this, right? Can't really see, but <laughs> their arms raised up. Or a tree looks like a menorah. Menorah looks like so many things. So it's saying that there's a natural pattern, a natural shape that comes of that pattern that we see all around us if we look closely. And so God is saying, don't worry about the shape it will take. You just give all that you can. Give all of your gold, which also is all of your material possessions, everything you own, everything you've got. Give it all to that fire, which is the flame of the heart. And I'll take care of the forging of it. I'll take care of the form, the shape, the pattern. I am the pattern. As your love is cast into the heart, the flame of the heart, which is me, God, the most high. Through me, the form, the shapes will be birthed. And so going deeper in that, into that idea, we could ask ourselves tonight and in the week ahead, how can we use all our materials, our material reality, not just as we said a moment ago, you know, to express our authenticity, but also to serve the divine, to serve the one, to serve the creator in all creation. How can we give of everything we have in the name of the Most High? How can we renew the purpose of the things that we have, that we carry with us, whether it's within us or around us? How can we reclaim the purpose within all those things? And in that process, we learn that there are certain things we don't need to carry anymore, whether it be concepts, beliefs, emotions, or actual physical items, relationships, projects, job, home, whatever it is. We realize that there are certain things that have, uh, you know, that we've outgrown that are no longer serving a purpose and we're ready to shed them. There we go. It gives us more power and more energy to then focus on those things that we do want to keep in our lives, to renew their purpose, which then sanctifies those things. It lifts them up, it elevates them in the name of God. So this week, with Parshat Tetzaveh, it's really asking us to hone in on this process of eliminating those things that no longer have a purpose, renewing the purpose of those things that we reclaim in our lives, that we know are here to serve the one. He, we, we think of everything we have and say, how can I dedicate all of this to God? My, my relationships, what, is it, what are they doing for God? Because they're all doing something. Everything is made of that light, that love. So how can we, through our conscious awareness, intentionally claim the higher purpose of each of our relationships, each of our things that we own, because they're not really ours. Our clothing, how can we use it to express ourselves in a way that serves the most high? Remember, put your heart into all that you do. Give yourself fully to the flame of the heart, which is where God resides, the mother, father, God. And everything from there will be taken care of. As we offer that dedication, that devotion, and really consciously, like I said, claim the divine intentions of all of these things in our lives, all these situations, people, places, stuff that we carry. As we do that, that process, and don't rush. Take your time, it's so, so sacred, so beautiful. Really take your time with it, because each moment that you're going through this process is so sacred, it's so powerful. Don't rush. And then at the end of this process, it's never really over, but after this round anyway, this process, you feel closer to God. You feel closer to all of creation. You feel at one with the elements. You remember that's what you are. That's who you are. So there's so much to gain from this process. You surrender anxieties, fear, all your worries, all your stresses, all your suffering, because you remember that all you have to do is put your heart into it, dedicate your experience to the one. 
And then God does the rest. You just cast the gold into the fire of your heart and God will make the menorah. Okay, so last week we built the tabernacle. We started building the tabernacle. So you started rebuilding yourself, your life, really restructuring things to better serve your experience moving forward. And now it's about taking all of that to a deeper level and asking how am I dedicating each detail of this process to the divine? And how can I refine more and more of this process? The way I look, the way I dress, and, and also to look at our judgments of, oh, well, it's just clothes. Oh, well, you know, it, it's, it's material, so it doesn't really matter. I'm so spiritual that my, it's not about my clothing. Who cares? No, but everything has a purpose. Everything becomes important when you make it about God. Everything has an opportunity for you to infuse it with that sacred light and intention. So watch your thoughts and your judgments when you might find yourself saying, I don't need, it doesn't, it's not about how I look. Of course, ultimately it's not, this is all temporary, but, but how can you use it? And how can you use everything as a vehicle to serve the divine, to be more intentional, to bring more purpose, to weave more light, more truth into your experience, to support the unfolding of God's great plan the plan of bringing heaven to earth. How can you dress in a way that will help to bring heaven to earth? And you gotta really ask that each moment, right? Because each moment, each day is different, depending on where you're going, who you're gonna be around, what role you are playing. Remember the archetypes, whatever role you are playing, dress to support that role. If there's a specific role you have to be in, for example, if today you need to be a magician because you need to connect to the elements, how can you connect with that magician archetype within? What colors can you wear? What scents, what oils? What nature can you connect with? What tools should you carry in your medicine bag? You know what I mean? So really it's a process where you need to constantly stay present and tuned in and ask yourself, which archetypal embodiment is best going to serve today? And in this Torah story, it, we were talking about the Kohanim and the priests. And of course these garments, which by the way, it was, you know, these, the way of dressing was instructed by God. But these garments, served their, that purpose. They, they needed to look like priests. They needed to hold a certain power. The breastplate, the priestly breastplate had power. It had a stone for each of the 12 tribes. That's so specific. And so what it's, what it's asking us to not dress, like may, maybe not even dress one way every single day, but rather to ask in each moment, stay present and ask, what role do I need to play right now? Okay, now that I know that role, I can then ask myself, how should I dress? How should I speak? How should I carry myself? What vibration, what frequency should I maintain in order to best embody that role? Instead of just waking up and say, hmm, how do I want to dress for me today? How do I want to feel? Yes, you are also are a physical body, so you have to consider temperature, but that's taking care of yourself, which is taking care of the one. So you got to really see where, you know, where your ego is going with this process of self-expression. Don't don't hate it. Don't hide from it. Don't try to brush it under the rug. There is no rug. There's no hiding place from the creator. But rather, it's about asking, how can I use the ego to serve the creator? It's a humble servant. You got to love it. You got to make friends with it. That's how it will work for you. You don't want to work for somebody who's a mean boss. But you got, when you got a cool boss, you want to work with them forever. And good thing it's all one. You're your own boss. There's no other here. But check in with yourself constantly, as often as you need to. Stay present and ask, what role do I need to play today for the one? And from there, make your choices as, how, as to how to express yourself. Don't get caught in that trap, that spiritual ego of, it doesn't matter how I dress, it doesn't matter how I look. Of course, ultimately no. But again, use it. Use it in the name of the creator. So this tonight and this week ahead is about asking ourselves about those details. How can I refine my experience to be a further service, including my physical expression? Because I am the temple. So the garments upon the temple are very important. Like we built the outside of the tabernacle last week. Now we're going deeper in and we're getting into the details of it. You know, all the drapes, everything on the tabernacle, all the materials were, were divinely instructed. And so... It was that the robes and the priestly 
you know, garments were all fashioned upon those same blueprints, those same designs, so that it was all proportionate and harmonious. All the angles, all the fabrics were resonant and harmonious and created a flow. How can you do that in your experience? How can you look at the place that you dwell, your home, which is a temple, your room, which is a temple, your body, which is a temple? How can you see them in harmony? How can you perhaps decorate not only your body with clothing and whatever it is you want to express yourself with, but also your room and your house? Is there a way that you can better harmonize all of those temples that you reside in because they're one within the other, right? Start to think about that. What's the sacred geometry? of the you within the room, within the home, maybe within the state, within the country? What is something you can do for the harmony of your state or your town, your state, your country? Okay, so it's about opening it up to that bigger picture and seeing it does matter what you wear. Ultimately, this all fades away, but there is an opportunity if we can be aware and remember there is an opportunity to use our physical reality, our physical being, even the way we dress, to bring more light into this world. So sure, you could say it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Nothing matters in that sense. And there are opportunities when we make that extra effort, when we take that extra step to move closer to God, then God moves deeper into us. You don't need to do any of this, but there are certainly so many opportunities to create more light in this world, to multiply the light, and that's why we're here, to make a conscious effort to take the light that already exists and multiply it. So how can you do that with your body, with your clothes, with the way you decorate your room, your home, your car? Remember, the tabernacle, the temple is everywhere because everything is a dwelling space for the divine. So how can we see that and how can we fashion that? A lot to think about and it's fun this process of refining, it's fun. And I'm excited to do it alongside all of you. So please share in the comments or share in our private group Shabbat crew on Facebook. Or if you're seeing this on YouTube, feel free to share there. If you're seeing this on Instagram, feel free to share there. It's Rebecca Magic across the board. Share with us what you're doing to harmonize the temple that is you, that is your room, that is your home, maybe your car. Share with us your insights. What are your thoughts? What are some changes you want to make? Or what are some ways you're already maybe subconsciously doing that? And how can you recognize that now with conscious awareness? Share these thoughts with us, please. This is why we're here in this Shabbat crew um, using this virtual platform to, to connect all brothers and sisters across the globe so that we can grow more together. This right here is an opportunity to create more light. So please share. I wish you all a meaningful Shabbat. If you didn't see the activation, it is up already. And I do have the cards laying right in front of me. And last week, it was kind of cool how I connected the activation to the Torah story. And so I'll just kind of share here. The ways in which we don't refine our process, right? If we still dress a certain way that's not serving the Most High, if we choose to not fashion ourselves correctly and without, without conscious awareness and no purpose, we keep ourselves trapped at a certain level of awareness. We, we don't allow ourselves to grow because the way we choose to do one thing is the way we choose to do everything. So if we're not choosing to be intentional about the way we dress, chances are we're probably letting a lot of other th things slide too. And then what happens is we get stuck wherever we're at, we don't grow but we wanna move on to new inspiration. We wanna move on to new growth. We wanna be inspired. We wanna grow on our spiritual and psychological journey. But in order to do that, we need to follow our heart. We need to follow the truth. The Lamed is about the heart following the heart. The heart is the leader, the guide. We need to allow the heart to guide because the heart knows the truth. The heart knows that the things you've been thinking, the things you've been saying, the things you've been doing, the things you've been wearing are BS. And then you're ready to grow. You're ready to try something new. The heart knows what you need to do to be a new you. The heart knows what to do to be a new you. The heart knows what to do to be a new you. So be honest with yourself. Let your heart lead the way. If you want to get unstuck, we all do. We all want to keep growing because the potential is always there. So we know it's there. So get that. If you want to get that, let the heart lead. 
find that new passion for life, for your path, through new expression. How can you express yourself differently and feel the shift in the contrast of how you once were to who you're choosing to now be? Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Have a meaningful Shabbat. I really look forward to hearing from you all. I would love more interaction. I want to hear what you guys are learning every week so that I can grow. And I would love to see more videos of you guys singing the, the candle lighting prayer. It's my favorite. It's been a long time since someone has sent me one. So if you feel called to learn it, it's just the Shabbat candle lighting prayer. You can look it up online and learn it. And it's not very long. And I want to see your videos.